I'm working with Mind Freedom right now and we're doing the I Got Better campaign and it's sort of help people with mental health challenges um, that are in a really low spot, you know, help with people that are feeling suicidality, that are going through immense amounts of trauma, feeling hopelessness. Um, so, are you a consumer of the mental health system? I am not a consumer of the mental health do you, system. Do you consider yourself a survivor of the mental health system? Yeah, I, I, I'm a psychiatric survivor. Psych okay, cool. Cool. Um, do you consider that you're in a path of recovery or at a high level of recovery right now? Um, I, I don't generally put things in terms of recovery language, although okay. I have in the past. And if I was going to use the recovery framework, I would say that I've re recovered from, okay. from whatever troubles that I have. What type of framework do you use? What type of terminology language? I like to use sort of street language. Okay. Like, so, like, I'll say things like uh, flipping out or I'm really bummed out or I've got a whole shit ton of energy. and. Or like in terms of if I think about sort of the experiences I had before, I don't okay. think in terms of like I don't think I had a mental illness, and then um, had to go through recovery. I think that I think I had a lot of uh, things happen in my life that were really difficult, and, and I had to, to deal with them. And it's more about sort of a, a story framework, like narrative kind of framework about about things. So you said street, more street language. Were you ever homeless? No. Okay. Okay, just wondering if it was like street lingo. Uh, no, no, no. <laughs> okay, so I'll try um, and be smart about that. Um, oh, no, well, you can use whatever language you okay. want. I can figure out how to fit yes. mine into it. Yeah, everyone has their own language. It's very unique. So what is your best coping tool? Um, well, the thing that I love to do that gives me probably the most life is to spend time in nature and to spend time outdoors and just to be uh, breathing in the sweet smell of evergreen trees and looking at the sky and um, taking long walks. Nice. So who supported you most in your life and what was the most helpful thing that they did? Um, I mean, I've had a lot of good support. Um, I guess one of my best friends has been there for me uh, for forever. Um, and then I also, you know, I actually had a, a therapist slash mentor that was just extremely powerful in my life. Um, my grandmother was very supportive of me. My family has been at, at times, um, so I've, ha I've had sort of a number of different experiences with good support. Um, my cat that I used to have was incredibly um, uh, powerful in my life for a few years. I have a cat that's 11 years old, yeah. and I was literally just thinking about how I miss her luscious rolls right now. <laughs> I love her deeply. I, I don't like dogs, but I love cats. <laughs> right? so. I, I mean, I never was raised with dogs. I was always raised with cats, and oh. I've had I've had dogs live through now. And there's a couple of things I'm surprised. They're really smelly. Oh, dogs! Yeah, they're smelly. They're they're, they're in your face. They're they're sort they're of they're needy. They're yeah, whiny. They're, yeah, they're it's like they can be eight. Terrible animals. Yeah, yeah, I'm just like, what is happening? <laughs> I love how that's recorded. Okay, um, so what was the turning point in your recovery? Well, I think that um, I mean I went through various phases of how I would think about myself. I mean, mm -hmm. for a while I thought that I had. Well, for a while, I, I didn't know how to think about anything. I just had a lot of really intense feelings, and it was really difficult. Once I got into a mental illness framework and sort of was diagnosed with mental illness, I had this mental illness framework. Um, there, there were some things that were helpful about that. Mm -hmm. I later came to see that as a very um, limiting, self-limiting uh, thing. So there, there was kind of a, I guess, uh, when I think about like what was actually helpful in my recovery, I have to think about you know at what stage and, and in growing out of that, it was very helpful for me to. Um, I had to do. I did had to do a lot of things. It was very challenging in my life to learn um, how to sort of be well. But um, in doing, I also had to kind of come to a place of um, really trying to to change my story, such that I saw myself as really uh, um, uh, being a, a human on, on par with the rest of people. And um, with that came sort of the acknowledgement that I was actually. At that point, um, that I needed community support, mm -hmm. um, but I, that I was also 100% responsible for everything that I would do in my life, and that there was no, no more saying that things were a symptom or anything. Um, it, it was about that, that, that they, were, they were who I am as a person, and that I had to be responsible for that and have int integrity around that. But I couldn't have gotten to that place in my life without having people support me through the other times when I was so overwhelmed that I couldn't. You know, I couldn't just come to a place, like, I, I needed to sort of um, express myself, um, and, uh, you know, so I was just overwhelmed. So you talked a lot about people supporting you. What was one of the biggest ways that people supported you? It, well, I mean, I, I had a lot of people not so 
support me. I mean, but in terms of the the treatment as usual, mm -hmm. the things that were really helpful was when people would would just be there with me and I guess just listen, okay. um, and would uh, um, really try and understand where I was coming from and not judge me. So what? So this I got better for helping people yeah. that are struggling with their mental challenges. Yes. Um, what is one of the messages that you would like to give to people that are suicidal right now, yeah. that are in self-harm, that are in a dark place, that yes. feel that they live in an island of hopelessness? Yeah. It, well, I mean, I've been, I've been there a lot. I mean, I, I think, so I, the first thing is that you're not alone. Um, the sec, the sec, and that, that there's a lot of um, people out there that you can connect with around these experiences and we can share with each other. and. Um, uh, so that, that you can be a part of a community and, and um, you know, I guess that the message though, that the thing that I always kind of come away with is that it's really important that, that people, um, you know, it's, it's a very vulnerable place to be in when you feel like that and it's very easy to latch on to belief systems that, that other people have about w what you are and how you're experiencing things and I think that, um, I, I guess, um, you know, if, uh, I've been given the advice and it sort of has really helped me that if you can just stay open to, if you can just hold the questions and stay open and, and be, be um, you know, have some kind of curiosity about the experience, as devastating as it is, because um, it will pass. And yes. Things, things get better. What is your hope for the mental health system in the future? Um, I, I <laughs> what did you say? I mean, I was going to say that uh, I guess I, my, my hope is that we will we'll, um, <laughs> we'll bulldoze it. <laughs> no, I think that's great. Uh, uh, Someone else has said something uh, very similar. I, I mean, yeah. Um, my, my hope for, for the, the mental health system that we have right now is that, um, that, that <sighs> I guess I, my, my biggest hope is I just wish wish that it would break free from the rigidness, the fear, the, um, the control, and um, the power um, thing, and to uh, start to ally with the people that it's supposed to help, and start to see us as comrades, and not, you know, and, and for us to start building community together, instead of this whole, you know, expert patient, um, uh, a clientele uh, kind of relationship. This isn't a business transaction. This is about building um, uh, lives and uh, uh, restoring vitality. These are things that belong more to art, um, that belong more to um, aesthetics. They're not things that we need to be putting into these um, uh, uh, pragmatic frameworks like these CBT, DBT, and all that, I mean, which can be helpful. I get it, but they're not. It, that's not it. That's not the essence of these things. And we need to start to restore the sense of what it means to be alive um, in ourselves, so that we can give that to other. And I would like. I guess I'd like to see the mental health system uh, be a little bit more poetic. Ooh.